it's, it's now about, if the clock's right, it's about seven minutes after three, and we're going to call this um, budget work session to order um, for the year 2024. And I guess we're officially on the air now. Okay. We've officially started. So just FYI, I believe everybody knows this, but we are having technical difficulties with our AV system. So this meeting will be recorded and it will be posted online, but we are unable to do the live stream today. That'll be for the work session and the meeting tonight. And the page, the landing page on the website does tell people that they're more than welcome to join us in person um, or listen to the audio file later. The what figures? I'm sorry. The vehicle leases. Vehicle leases. Mm -hmm. They're about uh, three quarters of a million dollars. So that's been rolled into the revenue and the expenses. Um, we also had a couple of other other changes. Um, I was contacted by the commissioner of public schools that the maintenance of effort number that I used from the handout that we got was understated, and I needed to add 218,000 to it. So I did that. Um, so the maintenance of effort funding is over 700,000. So they're coming in. We still haven't, they're still telling us that the maintenance of effort calculations are not available. So I haven't seen the calculations. Then my question is, how do you come up with the number? That's my question too, Ron. <laughs> I mean, in years past, and I don't know going into this, how much of Kerwin is a bill is affecting this or not. It was always the way we, with it went ever since they had that maintenance of effort. You had fifty. Or you had ten kids increase times eighteen thousand some dollars a piece. It was one hundred eighty thousand dollars plus plus um, um, pay raises, salaries, and things like that on top of it. Whatever they were asking for. What is what is the driving factor for them to say maintenance of effort is seven hundred and some thousand dollars because? If we've had an increase in students, it'll be the first time in probably first or second time maybe in 25 years. So that's why I keep asking for the formulas. Under Kerwin, I think there's several programs and pots of money, and no, nobody's really sure because we haven't seen the formulas yet. If they're going to do a separate MOE for each bucket of money that we have and then add it together, or if there's still going to be one overarching, you know, cost per pupil, or if it's going to be But their actual request is much more than oh, 700 yeah. and some thousand. It's 2.2 million of the last I've seen. It could be higher now. Well, 218,000 higher than I told you last week. <laughs> okay, so. 2.6. Uh, so 2.4. 2.4. 2.4, yeah. So why don't we just walk through the trial side numbers again since they're a little bit different? Um, and let me, I don't want mean to interrupt you, but I want my everybody to understand too we're supposed to be getting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the state which is money that we're supposed to give to the board of education which will then in turn increase that maintenance of effort i understand by two hundred and fifty thousand dollars if the director needs that we have to pay that 250 above maintenance of effort yes or no so, so we'll increase it forever pat and i had a conversation yesterday we pulled up the actual documents in the uh, capital budget for the um, state, it states that the 250 is above what we gave them last year. Well, so the question is, can it that 700,000 of required MOE can be included in as part of that 700? If so, it's not going to affect the MOE number moving forward. If it's in addition to that 700,000, then it will. So we, we need some clarity on that. It really wasn't clear to us from reading. Because the, the only way that you could have an increase in maintenance of effort 
in, in years past with the rules in, that we had in place was that you had to have an increase in population, school population. Now that didn't, you know, obviously we always gave them some because you've got pay raises and stuff, but the maintenance of effort figure was driven by, and, we, and when they first implemented, we argued the fact that you don't want to do this because what it does, it, it discourages the county from ever giving more money when you've got more because you can never take it away. Absolutely. When I was, when it was Mike Noonan and I sitting in here years and years ago, we've gave as much as a million and a half dollars back then to the school system because we had it. But now in today's, you'd be afraid to do something like that because you can't, then you're stuck with it the rest of your life on bad years. You can't, you've got to come up with it. And that's, it was a terrible law to start with. So that, the, the outline number, I think, is like $30 million five we're supposed to be paying when we get to the out there. You could add whatever you give them above maintenance of effort, you just need to add it to that number because it's going to flow all the way through. Yeah. And it really is a disincentive for counties to fund over MOE because mm -hmm. anybody that's looking down the road at those large increases doesn't want to, you know, have, we're struggling with how we can fund it as it sits, let alone if we added $2 million to it. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to talk about those couple, those couple issues. All right, so in your books in the overview section, you can either see it on the screen or you can see it in the book, whatever's easiest for you. But um, this is what the revenues look like. The number is slightly higher. Um, we have about a 6.1% um, growth in, in revenue, budget to budget. So it's a little higher, and that's because the, the lease proceeds of 735000 Income is another place where we're really seeing a pickup. We have about half a million dollars more in revenue just because of rates, um, more than we have to do with our balance sheet as much as, as the rates are climbing. Um, intergovernmental, I put in that 250,000 um, with the Blue Print funding that we think we're going to get from the state. So we have a slight increase in highway users and detention center. Um, recordation of property transfer taxes, we're projecting that to drop about. That that go back one um, that hundred and hundred four thousand dollars. That's the increase in the highway user funding. It's up in the six hundred thousand dollar range. It's out of the five hundred thousand, right? but it's still nowhere near the two and a half okay. million that they took away from us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have um, the lease proceeds. That two sixty two is the difference between um, the value of the leases last year and this year, and then other. So. We're going up about 3.2 million, which you would think, you know, puts it in pretty good shape. Um, we need to hit the expense side. So on the expense side, I updated the Board of Education number, and it's now sitting at a 2.4 million dollar request. Um, we think um, the lease capital is really the only other number that really has changed in here that we can roll through. Um, the maintenance of effort. It must mean something different than it did a couple years ago. I think the formulas have got to be different. I mean, I don't think they're going off of last year's um, cost per pupil. They can't be. Right. Mm -hmm. Our students have not. Because I think we've still had a decrease in population. We we haven't had an increase, and that's what used to drive that number. Mm -hmm. I think all the formulas have been redone, and they're reflected in here somehow. As soon as we get them, you know, we can talk about them. But mm -hmm. um, so there are additional requests. Primarily, the funded salary increase is just under 1.7 million. So they're, they're looking for two out of the 3.2 that we have. They're looking for 2.4 of it. Um, salaries: We have um, eight eight full-time and one part-time new position requests that are just under um, half a million dollars. Um, we built in a salary increase of six percent, which is kind of consistent with the state for neighbors. Um, the lifeguards are going up. They're just going out and operating until we change that. To Office um, is a favorite for us, and that's April, so we'll see. 
save some money in turnover. Uh, but basically, we're looking at $1.4 million in the sal in new dollars in the salary part of the budget. And the benefits that kind of you know, follow along with the salary, um, you know, is only about $548,000 there. Most of it's in the pension and these additions. Um, the allocation, um, we've got some really big numbers in here. Um, our agencies are asking for a little over $1.3 million in new money. The health department, That's the town, the one in the Galena area. That's rent for that building in Galena, right? She has a lot of requests. And it's a, there's, there's a salary increase in the library. There's, there's, mul there's many factors. They're, there. they're looking to buy a building, which would mean maintenance. And no, I mean local. where you've got highlighted town of Galena. Oh, oh that's the, that's the 20000 for the... Um, uh, the walking path. The walking path. And oh, okay. That's for the design yeah. of all three legs of the walking path. Like match those dollars. So we're gonna, when we go through the allocation, we'll, we'll talk about all those requests more in depth. And in the allocation section of the binders that you have is every request from every agency. It's in depth if you wanna read them. They're, they're all there, <laughs> happy to. Mm -hmm. um, on the operating side, the largest increase, and um, I don't know if you remember from uh, the Warden's presentation, is the detention center. Um, departments are requesting a little bit over 3.5 million. Um, the district gives you a little overview. Most of the capital is in public works, as it usually is, and the majority of it is in roads. And that does include the resurfacing. So um, that usually is our largest, largest section in the budget. Um, our leased vehicles, we have 14 vehicles in the budget this year. We have uh, most of them are in public safety. There's seven in the sheriff's office. So in the FY23 projection, our beginning fund balance when we entered FY23 was just a little over $9 million. It was 9.253. This year, with those numbers that we just went through, we're projecting a deficit of a little under $2.3 million. So we're going to have an ending fund balance of just under $7 million in FY23. That's our projection. Um, about 13% um, of our uh, general fund expenses. We usually shoot for a target of seven and a half. So you can see that target number is about um, three million nine, which is what we would want to keep in, in our reserves and not spend. So that leaves us an available balance of about a little over three million dollars. So I'm going to be a real pain to you because I want you to repeat that again. I d I'm not following that about the fund balance. What? So when we end FY23, we always look to see where we think we're going to end up. We're going to end up the year our, with a, a total fund balance, that $6,965,000 number, that's what our total fund balance will be. Um, we okay. usually like to keep 7.5% of it. So if we were out of that $6,965,000, if we were going to keep 7.5% 7 and not touch it and hold it in reserve, it would leave us $7,071,000 that we could use in the FY24 budgeting for non-recurring items. It's a one-time source of money, but we're projecting that we're going to have that money available for Seven million dollars. Three, three million. Three million. The number on the bottom. Okay. Here. Yeah, the available fund balance. Okay. Okay. So, if we roll forward over to the FY24 budget and look at it, so we take that 6.9 million and we say that's our beginning balance in FY24. Right now, as the budget sits, it's a deficit of 9.5. 
That eight hundred thirty-three thousand for that lease to us—that's the leasing of those vehicles, right? Which so, is a, which is a big number. But this seven thirty-five is so with the with the vehicles we borrow the lease really is we borrow the money and that shows as the revenue that seven thirty-five and the difference between the seven thirty-five and the eight thirty-three in expense is the equipment we have to put into the vehicles. We don't lease that. So like the sheriff's office is where most of it goes. So there's about, I don't know, $100,000 of equipment that goes into the car. So the revenue and the expense almost wash each other out except for the capital that we have to put into the cars. Oh, and the yeah. real expense for the county is in debt service because we have to make the lease payments. So while it, it shows in here as a revenue and an expense, it's virtually a wash except for that $100,000 in equipment. And we've been in this lease business for I mean, we're, we're probably getting to the point where somebody can, should be able to take a look at this sometime and determine whether it's the way we want to go or do we want to do what we used to do. And I think you asked to speak with them so we can have them come in and, and talk to us about how we, how we stand in comparison to where we thought we'd be. I'm just curious, uh, when, when, you know, if, one of these days we can look and decide whether that was a good <coughs> a good investment and that thing. I mean, you can look at the fleet, and we're obviously seeing newer equipment people are riding around in. We're saving on maintenance. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and one thing that we can't really quantify is we're probably also saving on some accidents because of the liability and the, the improved safety equipment, backup cameras. I found it pretty interesting that when Mike was here, he said we have 136 county-owned or county leaseholds. I think that's the total leased and purchased. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like a pretty high number. And we, we have a list by department if you're interested. In mm -hmm. and I don't know whether it, that, I'd that, like to see it at some point. Mm -hmm. That yeah. doesn't count the uh, snow plows. No, that's right, not. that wasn't the large equipment. Right, that was just, not the large equipment. That's just car. small vehicles. Yeah, pickup cart, trucks. Cars and pickup trucks. Mm -hmm. So I guess the big takeaway from I'd, I'd also like to, at some point, on these, on, on, on these lease vehicles, some of them sit a lot. And some of them are needed, so, and maybe some of them aren't. So I'd like, I'd like to see what the mileage is on these vehicles that are already two or three years old. Because I know of one agency that there's some nice vehicles sitting a lot, okay. and Absolutely. and if they're not being utilized, then I think that that's it would be responsible if we did Correct. at least look at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and one thing that you're probably not going to see is what we've done is we've required in our personnel manual we've required that if there is a car available, that the county staff person use that car. And if they choose to use their own car, they will not be reimbursed POV miles. So where in the past, if they chose to use their own vehicle, they would be reimbursed POV miles. Now, we have enough county cars, even if we have 
um, a meeting, for example, the Jeep that the commissioner's office is in charge of, six different departments share that one vehicle. And if two different departments need that vehicle on a given day, we encourage them to find another vehicle that's not being used that day instead of being reimbursed POV miles. So we've really changed the, the policy on that. We'll definitely have a savings there. Mm -hmm. So a big takeaway from this is that in the capital, and, and we would need to take out a million four hundred and fifty thousand to balance the budget, and then in the recurring, and the recurring is personnel operating allocation, floor to bed, other and transfer. We would need to take we need to take six almost six point three million out of that side of the budget. So the whole point of this exercise is to kind of focus where we need to cut. So um, the part that we're going to look at today, I guess we're going to start with capital. We really need to take a million four fifty out of that section of the budget to try and catch those balance needs. So why don't we do that That's now and shell. get that piece? Yeah. <laughs> we know where we know where we've got to end up, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. At a million four hundred. Capital. So, yes. Okay. So we, are, we would start on page four if you want to start to look at the department by department. And most of the, as you said, most of this capital is going to be in public works. So in the county commissioner's office on page four, there's a vehicle in here to replace um, I think the Jeep. The Jeep. So there's 33. So I have a question. Okay. What's being proposed is the 2024 Ford Explorer. Mm -hmm. And in the conversation that we had here with, with Sheriff Hickman and Mike, the Chevy Tahoe is, is cheaper to lease. Keep and in has mind a, and has this, a better resale this, value. Right. This is just a placeholder. So okay. we got quotes in. We can decide which specific vehicle we want, you know, later. But right now, it's simply a, we, what we said is we have a Jeep, what is that thing? Charity? Patriot. 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 We have a Jeep Patriot give us something similar, and this is what was plugged in. That doesn't mean that that's necessarily going to be the vehicle we the get. The pricing for the Tahoe is probably comparable, so we may want to look at that when we get closer. We can swap out yep. the vehicles for yep. the dollars. I just wanted to mention because yep. if, well, yeah, I, I agree it, the if I you understood it correctly, well, we talked about the fuel mileage. Dennis actually looked at that because he was concerned about the size of the Explorer versus but with, the Tahoe with, get with all that the, equipment. The commissioner's office won't get nearly the miles that we, you know, the sheriff's office gets on it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. so we can look at that. Um, we really literally got these numbers between last Tuesday and this Tuesday, so we haven't had a whole lot of time to, to go through them. But, yeah, you can correct And the, the Jeep Cherokee that we have, the Jeep Cherokee? Patriot. Patriot. How many miles are on it now? Do we know? I don't remember. Uh, that's that's, and me, and maybe that's the part here. that causes us a little bit of, or, or I don't want to say heartburn, but it's it's a part that you really don't know. I mean, that 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 ex, that Jeep that we've drove to, I mean, that's a nice run. And I, I never had it, a trouble. It runs pretty good. It runs, yes, yeah, yeah, you ought to know. And, and we, we can Especially keep, now, it's we can keep something in our fleet and just... I mean, what, what we're doing is we're basically at the end of the cycle swapping out the oldest of our vehicles because in the first couple of years, it was the low-hanging fruit, the, the really old or the really high miles. Get rid of all those. I guess my thing is it would be a whole, it would be a no-brainer to me to get rid, to just take that out of the budget that. because we've got much more important stuff we're going to have to debate over. Good. and.
and and I understand that argument. It's just hard for us sitting here to see that when 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 we when we have such all a this, hole. all this financial stuff that we're facing this year. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, it's like, and I'm jumping ahead here a little bit <clears throat> because of where I come from. The sheriff's office has seven vehicles that they're asking for because they were told by Mike that they they have two Chevy Tahoes right now that each have 80,000 miles on them. Dennis feels, and I know myself, Dennis, our sheriff, feels that he, he sees no need to replace those vehicles now, that he can get another year out of those vehicles, which cuts his request back to five. You know, I don't know. How, I don't know how, but now, yes. We may lose money. Well, we, we, lose we might, but you know, but when those. But when those vehicles are done anyhow, if anybody buys them, they're, they've had hard use. Right. But we can look at the numbers because the resale value is part of the equation. And while, you know, if you're used to looking at the expense side, that revenue part of it was the real reason that this was a good venture for us. So I guess an easier way to explain that ahead. to me would be if this 33000 is what we're going to pay for this new vehicle, what are we getting for the old one when we sell it? So we're still selling vehicles that aren't new. So like I think we still have some of our, but once we got past the five years, then we were going to be into a recurring cycle of selling the leased vehicles, which should only be five years old. So right now we're still selling vehicles that are more than five years old. So this would be the last year really of that. So I think Enterprise, they did a good presentation. If I Because we skipped a year. Skipped a year. Skipped a year. Okay. Uh, sure so we're, 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 we're on year four. four. Yeah, okay. So. There was yeah. one year we didn't lease anything. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. four for your for the sheriff's yeah. department um, because of various things. They were shot. Yeah. But they were. Yeah. Do we know what the mileage is on that Jeep? Can you get uh, to it? We have. I'm sorry. We keep a list. Okay. Yeah. So we can get that so to I you. Think, I think maybe for next week, maybe we should bring in if, if there's any other information. But we can. There's a lease schedule, and yep. we can add the mileage to it on the trade-in vehicles. And you know, it might be good to have Mike in for that. Conversation. This might be the best program that we that we're that we belong to, but sitting here with a deficit that we have and knowing we've got a pretty damn good fleet under us, when you're talking seven hundred thousand dollars or something, it's just a big number, and it's hard to yep. it's hard to see the savings or or, or whatever. It, yeah, the whole, the whole not point. Not that was it's not there. I, it's no, just. I, but I think we need to look at it absolutely. Right. So why don't we move on? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Save expediency and. Yeah, the whole point was to get all of our vehicles into this program. But if we choose to not get replace some of them and we put it off, I mean, that it's not going to hurt us. It, it, Pat's right, the, the trade-in value decreases, but it just gets one less vehicle into the cycle. Well, I think we're safe to take the, can we just take this one out? Just, there'll be a start on it or not? Sure. I mean, I don't know. It's up to my partners here, but uh, it's just I, I do know that the one we've used is, is like I said, it's do just the fact that we're sitting here with a big deficit we no. got to oh, take no, care no. of. And no, I mean, I I drive the Jeep. The I would say probably the biggest irritant I have is it doesn't have a backup camera. And that's one of the you know safety. safety but I mean, all things considered, I mean, I don't have a problem with the Jeep, or and it doesn't have a tremendous amount of miles on it. If we push that one out of the cycle, we push that one out of the cycle. So, so Sandra graciously ran outside and it has 46,735 <laughs> We'll keep it. I hope we keep it. All right, so let's, let's take it out. Yeah, let's yeah, take, take it out. You know, take that one out. All right. Okay, so then next we have a big request from the finance office. Did you buy your shredder? Uh, yeah, we did. We Very have, good. We can't live without a shredder. Phew. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was hot. That was yeah. a big, important topic. <laughs> um, so in our office, we're actually looking, um, all of my staff spends all of their time looking at computer monitors. Um, we'd really like to get some larger ones if they're, if it's in any way possible this year. Um, I know. could, it's up to me, I could turn the page. That's a very modest. Yeah. 
report. Well, and one of the things that you can consider is we can have IT look at, um, we've had a, a number of people ask for larger monitors. We can see if there should just Just to save time, I, so, uh, my, uh, that's a whole department there, a request of $2,500. I think we, I we need to problem. go through and get the big stuff <laughs> yeah. and okay. well, pay, right. bypass this. So I'm and wondering... Then, Push comes to shove, then we have to come back and revisit sure. this. Sure, okay. Maybe well, some of this could be purchased with contingency this year. And like we, these and are look, tiny. We always say, if you got money left in your budget, then use it now. Right. Buy some as much of this as you can. Okay. So is is that the mess officially the message at this point? I think so. Okay. But, okay perfect. I mean, if, I mean, if, if, if they instead of this being in their budget, if Pat's got, I don't know whether you do, and maybe I'm you don't. <laughs> if you got money left over, use it on buying this little stuff and let us yeah. try to catch up with the big items. Yeah. Okay, all right, so on page 8, um, there's 85,000 in IT. Um, and then the next one is Scott's book, and it's for the, it's, um, I'm going to turn out to be the cyber security. Page 8. Yeah, 85,000. Oh, 8. I yeah, thought yeah, you, I've got it up on the screen. I thought you right said 80. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Switches were well, it's, simply. It's 115,000 this year, right? Um, the 30,000 is a number that we put in every year or two for when we have to do the next computer upgrade so that we don't have to buy it all at once. So every, that 30,000, um, the 85 at top on the top are the special items for this year, and then we fund 30,000 into our computers every year so we don't have a big. I think every four or five years we, they do a, a refresh. Mm -hmm. The problem with, with me now is I don't know what's important and what ain't. And I, I if the whole world revolves around computers. I would be hesitant to say no to any of this and then it come back to haunt us. So that's, I was just getting ready to say, I, I don't know that I'm educated enough to with, be able to say. With cybersecurity, you know, we're getting I, more and more I'd oversight, oversight with the state. That. I, I would recommend yeah. you keep that in, yeah. Right. Either that or maybe, maybe ask Scott to prioritize. They are. It is prioritized. Every, oh, it is. Everything that you're looking at so is have, priority order. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So it is prioritized. So okay. the 49,000 is his, his number one top priority. priority. Mm -hmm. The layer switches are number two and the firewall is number three. We always ask them to do that so that if you, where we move something goes from the bottom up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I see right. that. Okay. Okay. So then if you go to page 15, you can look at rows. That, those are the twin bridges, the aren't twin they? Bridges, yeah. mm -hmm. On Langford Road. Yeah. I'm very familiar with them. They're completed, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at. I'm sorry. I'm looking at 23. The column for 23 shows what we spent for, um, okay. for the right. task force. So he's looking for um, one standard cab dump truck for 180,000. We've got the Clark Road Pike Project for 250. We've got the paving in there, um, Porter's Road, Rose, Chatham Reach, and Henry Point. Oh, now. I think those are last year's. Yeah, they are. Maybe, and I may not have a current list of them then. Yeah, I was going to say, Porter's Grove was in last year. He put it in this year. He put it in this year. Right it just yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. A little ironic. Okay. So we can mention the names. No one picked up on that. No, I bet not. <laughs> Jeannie has it for the paving. What page number was it? 20.
are we trading in a dump truck? I think it's pretty much at the end of its life. If I'm not mistaken, it's really, really old. Um, page 17. You know what? This one was approved last year. That's, yeah, and it just didn't arrive this year. It's taking them 18 months or more to get a dump truck. Yep. So actually, we're not going to pay for 23's dump truck until 24. And the same thing for anything they order for 24, it's either going to be paid for 25 or hopefully be kept up at some point in the near future. And then we would have two dump trucks in one year. Um, mm -hmm. But so basically, 24's dump truck is, is the way to go for the order for 24. So this one's already been approved. Like in 25, they're expecting we'll yeah, play yeah. catch up. Mm -hmm. So what they're asking for really isn't the 180. The 180 was already approved last year in FY23. What they're asking for is approval to go ahead and order the FY24 one, which would arrive in 25. Another question. Kyle Chester Beach Road. Mm -hmm. Is that back in the estate? I thought that was that's Katie. and I thought that was uh, I thought that was Street. State Highway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. State Highway goes down there ways because it that's does. Three twenty one. If it's if it's got a number on it, it's not ours. Right. So at whatever point it. Oh, well, that's Route twenty one until you get. I don't know how far whether it changed. I'm say around the intersection or just past the intersection, it might cut off. It says in state maintenance right there somewhere. Yep. What, like in front of the Nike site where the Ag Center is? Past the, past the Ag Center, I think it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Good move. Basically asking for approval to receive one in 25. Okay. I know. <laughs> can we can we get through 24 before we say? Thank yes? you, pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> it's my understanding that the chips and all of the backlog of this is going to break loose in about six six to eight months. The 368,000 for the uh, the, pay, uh, the road mm -hmm. that's tar and chip or mm -hmm. paving, whatever the tar and chip, and I guess is. Because you had the last year's roads, is the number still the same? The number's right. It's, it's, it's the, the it's yeah. the mm -hmm. okay. And Shelly, if you look in the, the details of why you're having to break down by road, if you want us, if you want to do a yellow by road, we can give that to you. Well. The Clark Road pipe project, and I know we heard Mike talk about it, and I know where it's at. Mm -hmm. um, is this um, short of it be needing to be done? This is not impacting anyone's front yard, backyard, it's never. I think there was, it is. There was one fella come in here and complained about that, but. And we started it in 23, so mm -hmm. it's kind of in the, it's, it's, if you look, we, we spent about 17,000 on it, but they have started the project. Um, so they have to, they have to stop. Mm -hmm. It's like going into city and say it's taking this long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So basically, you got a dump truck of a four hundred eighty thousand that was ordered last year that we haven't received yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got the Clark Road project, mm -hmm. 
that was approved last year and it's not completed yet. So we're expecting a dump truck from last? Mm -hmm. It was ordered in last year's budget. I've got, so in the paving project, Tolchester Beach Road is 165,600. Camp Road is 41,600. Davies Hill Road is 100,000. And Mill Lane and Lee Avenue together are 61,400. I think I'd take the dump truck out and let it. Well, that's already been ordered. Uh, this one in this budget has already been ordered. doesn't help us this year but he's going to order it if we don't tell him not to and it will be we'll be in the same spot in 25 yeah well I, I, I'm, I'm, I, my, I, my vote is with Ronnie that don't take it out one of the things that you know I mean I, we certainly didn't put much strain on them in the snow this year no, which, sir. that no. that that was mm -hmm. we didn't have that issue and for uh, two years yeah. now right yeah. Absolutely, our winters ain't been nothing like right. what they have been, and we don't use them all at one time. I mean, when the boys are on the road, you don't use all of them dump trucks. So, I, I'm not. Go I might even make an argument that maybe we have one or two too many. I mean, because the only time we use them all at one time is snow removal. Correct. Yeah. So we, we always have the opportunity to contract that. Shit, we can. We can go rent one from Dave Bramble and we'll get a jam, and a jam or one of these other boys that's doing the work. I, I, with the numbers we're dealing with, I think we have much don't have much choice but to take it out. That's correct. So we can take out the one for 25, but the one for 24 has already been ordered. So that don't help us for this but it'll, year. It'll help us from being in the same situation in next year. That we're right. committed to 180. Well, I still think we ought to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we're, we're sitting here, and I, I'm not even sure how many dump trucks we got all together, to tell you the truth, or snow plows. But it, it says 12. It, 12. That's probably right. And with paving, I mean, that they, they're sure is nice when we pave a road, but uh, it's paving. It's sure nice when we pave a road, but do, <coughs> do we need all those? These are the recommendations from roads, but it's up to you as to whether or not we move forward. We could take down. I mean, they've prioritized those roads, and I mean, we got to start taking start something somewhere. out of here. I know. I would take the bottom one or two roads out. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Is one of these your roads? Then you can't get to work. <laughs> then you won't be able to come to work. Avenue is 61,400. And what was the next one up? Davies Hill Road, 100,000. You want to take that one down? I don't know. We'll hear from the colleagues. I, I know we got to take Mill something Lane out and Lee somewhere. Avenue, 61, if they're not in terrible shape, I mean, none of us have been there to see it. I don't know that our roads are in all that bad shape, but uh, we don't want to give up. Uh, there's a rotation that we're doing. I I, I understand that, but yeah, they, they like to do about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars of these rotations. Um, well, and we're talking about paving as opposed to resurfacing with tar and chip. Correct. Right. That's the next one down. So and you know they have the three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars in the in the tar and chip, and they don't identify the roads for that. So I, I, I think, think they, they may have in the um, on the next page. Got them all um, prioritized, but yeah, I think you know Club Road, Club Terrace, Marina Star Road, Schooner Road, Skipjack Road, Spinnaker Road, Os Owasso Road, Bunty Road. That's all on Chesapeake Lane. Chesapeake Lane. Oh, and all of course. All of those are. Yes, <laughs> the made-up name yeah. area. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bunting Road, Crane Road, Fermoy Road, Glenola Road. 
He's all your neighbors. <laughs> I say they're made up words. I, I know they're Indian names, but. By Rio? Now these are all Tarn Chip you're talking yep. about. These yep, by Rio, Y, Wallace, Woods, Needham, Hackett, Boyer, Beaver, Fox Chase, Riley, well, Snack. Well, could we, I mean, I mean, this is maybe not, and I'm just throwing this out there. Could we. You could. You could cut it in half. Well, I know let, we could do whatever. Well, I'm just, but I'm just, could we tar and chip these roads as opposed to pave them if they're, if they're in desperate need of? I think their argument is that they don't let the paved road and tar and chip it. So I don't no, know. no, I don't think any of these are paved. Yeah, right. And no, that's, no, these that are not has, paved. Yes, that's I, been done in the budget process before. Camp, I know Dave's Hill Road is not paved. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Tall Chester Beach Road is paved from where we take maintenance. I don't think. I don't, I can't say that. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm like, yeah, one, that, one that has been done in the past. Yeah. One thing they try to do is you know, some of these roads where you like you tar and chip them and they and they get ruts and, mm -hmm. and out of bounds. And every time you yeah. tar and chip them, it, that, sure. none of that comes out sure. much. So they try to pave them every once in a while, but the, the worst you the can roads, tar yeah. and chip a road like you're looking at for pennies on the dollar That's what right. blacktop and cross here. Why don't we just take one or two of the roads out of the 306 out of the paving? Just knock one or two off the bottom. We won't have we don't have to deplete the whole thing. But you're talking you're talking about the paving. The so paving. If, so there's five roads listed, but the bottom one has two roads. So if you were to knock off the bottom two listed, I'm guessing Mill Lane and Lee Ave are close. Are they close together, or are they just so small they got lumped together? I don't know the answer to that. They're tiny, apparently. But if you were to take off the bottom two lines, it would be 161,400. That's what you would take away. Mm -hmm. Let's put them, up, let's okay. put them up to the top of next year's okay. list. What's the third one from the bottom up? Camp yeah. Road, Church. Camp Road. Road. I'm not one sure. One goes to the uh, Elks Lodge, right? No, it's the dead end road. Oh, the camp. The Elks Lodge. Okay. Which one is the shut your mouth? Um, oh, okay. It's where, it's where the oh, development is back. The development, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That end, it, if you don't get out of it, once you go down Camp Road, it's the one that's just prior to the. And how much is that one? Uh, 41600 Now, one thing you guys could do is you, you could simply say, you know, we're, we're going to keep this, this amount in and then let roads prioritize which they think are the, the worst. So if they think that these three, for example, are, are in way worse shape than Tolchester Beach Road. You know, you don't necessarily have to approve it by road. And the same thing with the paving. You could say, I want to see that taken down to 200,000. You you don't have to, like, identify roads. And then let the, them. The tar and chip, you can, we can just knock the money off of that and yep. you can figure it out. I mean, like. Yep. That's a good idea, but I'm not a road guy. I think that's a great idea. Three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars is budgeted for tar and chipping. How about if we say we could make it two fifty? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yep, I like that idea. Tar and chip two fifty. Uh, Correct. And the other one we'll would take, would a, take a hundred, be a hundred or hundred and fifty away from that. Doing is putting it off for another year. They'll be at the yep. top of the list next year. Yep. Well, let's, yeah. Let's, I let's almost think we ought to ask them to take 200000 Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think 200000 there and just let them. 200000 from the paving? Out of, out of the paving. Sounds good to me. And let them decide which one is correct. Need yeah. The, yeah. So it's 200000 yeah. out of the paving, and we're going to leave the 250 in the service agreement? That's what so I got. If I remember right, this would be to give us an extra one so that we have more than one. So we've been. That's what it says. Yep. Yeah, we've been operating with one, but this would give us two for when one needs maintenance or. I think we re revisit that next year. I agree. I mean, they're, they're using one now. I make yes, they are. They're, they're making it work. I understand it might be a maintenance issue, but that's. About two hundred ten thousand there. And then the last item in roads is the road decay, dead storm water, and the roadway improvements. Just get on that on page twenty-four. 
And this is something the previous board had a discussion with residents. Mm -hmm. They come with these. It's supposed to, the main thing was, when, and it doesn't say it here, but I guess the, it's on the roadway improvements that there was supposed to be two or three street lights, three or four street lights, and uh, to light up the intersections. And we're still looking for the street dedication before we could move forward with that. Um, this is an orphaned development. Um, the first developer went belly up, second developer handed it back to us and said, here, you take it then. <laughs> so there's still a lot of roadway improvements, water, sewer, it's at sidewalks. Um, and one of the issues that they have is there was supposed to be um, streetlights, as Ronnie said. And so as soon as we get those the streets dedicated to us, some of these streets are still owned by the first developer, the one that went bankrupt. So we've got to get the court to go in and say that we are now the owner of that since we're the owner of the development. And as soon as that happens, we can do some of those pro projects. And we can, if, that's, if none of this can move forward until that's done, then we can take that 150 out of there until we get straight. I think you're right. Um, well, improvement stormwater drainage, it's possible we could do something with that. I guess the pond needs to be cleared out or cleaned yeah, out. I, or don't, I, don't, I don't think that pond's it. I, we were down there looking. Mm -hmm. I didn't see where that pond. Okay. Um, I mean, well, after, well, after we I'm get this. I'm going to rely on, on Ronnie on this one because he's had previous conversations. I would just take, I would take that out. And then I would notify Tom Yeager or whoever's going to do it to get those roads straight, and then we'll the, consider Tom, it. Tom's working on it. Okay. It's on his list of priorities. It's on his top three priorities right now. Okay. Um, and as soon as we get that straightened out, we, we can have we can come back in and ask for contingency yeah. for whichever piece of this yeah. should move forward first. By the way, so we have this in the back of our minds. How much have we got left in contingency? Hold Two on. or three hundred thousand. It's. I think it's two something. Two something, I believe. But yeah. I can tell you in just a second. I thought you were going to ask how much you took out. So we took, took out 670000 Yeah. And I tell you, I drive down Tomchester all the time, and I didn't know we had, but I don't see any big problems with road down there. And I think our roads are really in pretty decent shape. We haven't had real bad winters to tear them up. So I don't... Mm -hmm. That has been identified uh, by the state as needing repairs. They do bridge uh, inspections from time to time. Oh, you got it. You're quicker than I am. Oh. Okay. We're already leveraging quite a bit of money for that project. So we have about 200000 in contingency right now for FY23. To last us till 1st July. Yep. So if there's low hanging fruit here, mm -hmm. that like, for example, if Pat's folks can't absorb those monitors, we can have Scott's crew come in and say, hey, can we buy where's, 40 new where's monitors? And here's there. the cost. It's up um, between Chesterville yep. and Lena. Yep. <laughs> well, with something like that, I mean, we're almost, I mean, the, the, the state or the feds are doing the lion's share of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if we don't take advantage of it, we may not. No, may not. We're, we're on the list right now to get it. So if we had to start over and get on a new list. <coughs> and that's number three on his priority. So. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would be afraid of not doing that one. Yeah, because there's the consequences or one right. we don't want to have to deal with. Right. If it was to fall in or something. Correct. Right. Taking that. Not, Plus not car and chipping a road, we right. can we can live with somebody yeah. hitting a pothole, yeah. but this is. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. All right, we got a long ways to go, but we're All getting right. there. <laughs>
that's replacing the 2004 Peterbilt with over 500,000 miles. Is this going to be another one of these vehicles that they order and we won't see it until 2025, probably? It might be. I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. <laughs> there are two of them and they continually go back and forth to the landfill um, I don't know that this one has been I haven't heard of any Mike hasn't mentioned to me that this one's been particularly problematic I think it's just preventative trying to get ahead of it is there a way to think about delaying the order on this to Right at the next, end of the fiscal next, year. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a big... I mean, the truck looks like it's... I, I'm not saying they don't need a new truck, but I mean, if we can... I mean, and who knows, next year may not be any better for us financially. It might not be. <laughs> I mean, that's... But if it's asking for it this year, what number do you put on it? Uh, 280, I think. Sure. No, I mean, uh, priority. Oh, number one. Oh, it's only thing. asked, That's so the only it's one on that in list. this division. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <coughs> um, I think we make do with what we got. If it becomes a problem, we'll have to address it. Address it back. Well, and here's something else, and, and I know, I mean, this is a... Uh, it doesn't. It says replace a Peterbilt, but it doesn't say with what, does it? You mean the new truck? Yeah. Technically, no, because they did ask, but we weren't really. Yeah, we wouldn't. We wouldn't know. Yet, well, that's what I was asking. Okay. Yeah. I, my my question is, um, you know, Peterbilt is the Cadillac of the big truck world. Yeah, we. We would always so, bid that out, and we would never go for a particular brand. In fact, the other okay. one, I believe, is a Volvo, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Okay. So the two that we have aren't even I the mean, same. reliability, I think, yep. should be our number one. Yep. Um, yep. So do these vehicles travel outside of the county? Yes. This yep. one goes back and forth to Caroline County. Pretty yeah, right. so Picks their dumpsters up here, pulls in dumpsters up on their truck, and hauls yep. them to Caroline County. Mm -hmm. which we believe will continue on for an extra 12 years. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. You don't know how much that, that has bothered me for the last 15 years. Seriously, mm. especially with all the empty yeah. space. I, and I'm have. just hoping that in 32 years that there will be another alternative for trash. I, I think, yeah. Get on that, Mr. Matthews. It, it's it's going to evolve a lot. We have always said, and all the boards I've served with, that when it comes up to that landfill, they said, we're just banking on the fact that there <laughs> we'll have a, that somebody will be burning it up or we're going to incinerate. We're going to when it yeah. comes their turn, right? Yeah. And the fact that was it Caroline's keeping it for an extra twenty years or so, that's that's mm. even makes it absolutely. Better. Yep. Mm. Okay. All right, we took that out. Okay. So then the next department is. Does anybody know how often they do they go every day? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Probably two or forth. three times a day. Yeah, yeah. they um, because people drop stuff off, all the household, if you take your you know trash out there, it goes into those big containers, and then when it gets full, and they have compressors so that we can compact it down, and then they take it out to Caroline County. I will say something about that transfer site out there. That's as, when you want to go get rid of junk, trash, household. That's about as neat a run mm -hmm. facility as yep. you ever want to go to. It is a very nicely run. No doubt about it. Very nicely mm -hmm. run. And we'll, I know we'll talk about this when we get into personnel, but we don't have anybody in charge of that facility right now like we used to. With it's Marty, open right now. But it's open. It's, it's open. It's being advertised. So if you know of anybody. He does public land, or Marty used to do public landings and... Uh, all the solid and before waste. I forget it, we, I don't know why we haven't had him in here, but we ought to have him in. He, he's on for, I believe, next week. Okay, So good. It's, it's being worked on. Um, yeah, they also do the bulk waste. One of the things you guys could consider, I don't know if there's any appetite for this, but the dump tickets are very reasonably priced. We lose money on this operation every year. Um, you could... 
about it. I mean, we used to do it by weight. We, you know, there's a number of, we have scales out there, um, but we do lose money on this Because we have operation. to pay shipping fees every pound we take to that landfill. We have yep. to pay shipping fees. This may or may not be something you want to consider, but I felt the need to tell you. I remember when that dump was run like a boot camp one time, there was a price out there. <laughs> I mean like a boot camp, buddy. <laughs> I was a boy. He would yell at you, boy. Have you put something in the wrong spot? <laughs> I worked with him on the road, would, uh, and he'd yell at me, too. So he was, he'd pass it around. It's like I know that fellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's not. laughs> Do, can we skip? I, I'd say we get rid of this two point four million dollar thing. <laughs> Nicholson, <laughs> you skip right over the water that. Treatment plant. <laughs> that was, I was going to say we don't do that. I, I don't think there's any choice uh, in there. <laughs> nope, no, we're, we're, we're stuck with that one. Yep. I tried. The first, the, yeah, the HVAC units are at the government center. The, the boiler feed tank replacement is at the courthouse. Who uses the one ton pickup? Is that our maintenance department or something? Mm -hmm. The one ton pickup. We'll bring the whole list in and get it in front of you, and that way you guys can evaluate. But I'm just wondering, I mean, we're talking about what Bob probably uses, right? Probably oh, something like that, yeah. I don't know if it's him or one of his guys. Hmm. We're not talking about half time, we're talking about one time. They're replacing the one, okay, you can tell us what, okay. What page are you on? She's she, somewhere I'm else. Up. Oh. So <laughs> there is a schedule. There's a there's a tab for lease vehicle sheriff that is towards the end there. It's the third one from the bottom. Mm. That lists all the vehicles. Okay, yeah. It doesn't have all of the information you guys are looking for, but mm -hmm. if you want to look at all of them on one page, it's that lease vehicle tab. Fifty three quarter ton. I, I and and that's I, I tell you I see I learn more about it when I see it show up at, in each tab because I think what probably is getting some of our attention is what do you you know you're all oh, you're you're not hauling stuff you don't need a one ton if you're if you're just got some toolbox and you're heading to the courthouse or something and I'm not. Is like it a, might be the same maybe it's the yep. Tahoe and the Explorer. That I think just so. As, it's the same price to get it, a one ton. It ends up ton. it ends up being um, cheaper because the resale, the resale value. value. We're getting yeah. them at resale the government and that, rate. And that's the part we. But that's we, the missing part yeah. that we don't see, yeah. and it's yeah. what makes it a little tougher sometimes. Yeah. So we can find out who's. Yeah. Can we find out like the mileage on that vehicle? I mean, I know we're oh. splitting. Yep, but nope, we'll get you all that we'll information. That. Yep. And it's interesting because in the the commissioner's office, if you look at the leased tab, the annual payment's nine thousand for the replacement of the Jeep. So you're not re you're not getting thirty three thousand out of the budget, you'd be getting nine thousand out of the budget.
for trading that one in? It no, no, no. Just the annual, the annual payment. Oh, okay. It'll it'll reduce the it'll reduce the revenue ex and the expense by that thirty three. Yep. But the actual decrease in the budget would be that nine nine thousand. I'd like to look for dig just a little bit deeper into this vehicle, see if we can yep. keep we, it another year or so. I mean, we, I just we will. You know. We'll bring you all the information you need. We have those lists already available in the county. We just don't have them okay. today. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like Albert. I, I, you know, and I get, I understand the explorer colony thing because that's mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. uh, where I came from, <clears throat> but. I can't. I have a hard time envisioning that a one-ton truck is needed for building that house, especially when they're operating a three-quarter ton now. But Mike but can I, definitely. But again, I don't know what the difference right. is in the lease. Thing. I mean, to, Mike can tell you technically what they need, and then he'll also be able to enlighten us on why are we going with the one-ton pickup. I mean, is is it something that we're putting a snowplow on the front of and plowing parking lots? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that, but he'll be able to talk to that. Well, three quarter ton pickup. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's stuff like that that Mike could get you. I would just put a question mark on. Yeah. Yep. I mean, look, in my world, I'm driving a 2011. I have a 2011 F350 that I've had. I mean, I got 60,000 miles on it. And this year, I bought a Ford Ranger because it gets 25 miles to the gallon. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, maybe we need to start looking in that direction. Yep. I, if it works, I mean, I, I, you know. Yep. We'll get you all that information and you can evaluate. Especially if we're going to keep them for, for five years. I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next department is always small money spending. Um, we're seeing I think we'll just move on from there. Okay. And well, and they have a leased vehicle. But we can, uh, there we can is a leased vehicle. We can revisit that one as well. Yep. Oh, I do see that. And, and that's simply, you know, I, I don't have the information. But again, they have a vehicle. It's that is, but didn't didn't Bill also say that he's only asking for one and there's two yeah, over we there? Took, we, we took one out. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and so where did we, I, I mean, what did we? Code enforcement. Okay. I tell you the question you can an get answered for me from the lease company maybe. What would happen if we just took this year off and didn't, I mean, I know we got to do police cars and stuff, the emergency vehicles, but. Similar to what, we, what happened to us a couple of years ago when we did the same, do the same thing. Instead of being on a five-year rotation with a five-year lease on this vehicle, it's leasing out six years, we're going to overlap at some point, and we're going to have two years' worth of vehicles to sell and replace because they're all going to come in at their five years at the same time. The, the only thing, too, I remember, Ronnie, is that the lease value is $190,000. So what you're, you're going you're gonna to take the big numbers out of the revenue and out of the expense, but the net savings is the debt service, the lease payment that we make. So for all the vehicles, it's $190,000. We factor it down because we know they're not all walking through the door on July 1. So we put six months of the cost. Some are going to come in you know, in August. Some are going to come in in February. So You'd be saving, if you cut the whole program, you'd probably save 95000 in expense. Wow. Really? Okay. Well, see, that's, there's an aspect of this leasing that we don't, yeah. we don't see. Mm -hmm. All so, I see is $33,000 right, exactly. in the budget. And well, we're trying to cut a million six out of the, right. yeah. or a million four or something. Right. But <laughs> the lease vehicles really don't play into that because of the, the, the revenue, the, the lease proceeds, and the borrowed money from the lease offsets the cost of the vehicle. So it's really just those months That's why you're here, Patty. <laughs> All right, so page 37 is the charter property. Mm -hmm. uh, the protective du uh, duty vests. They're rotating. They, they're necessary. Un unfortunately, only good for five years. 
<clears throat> and I know they have a running schedule yeah. when they come available, so I don't think we could, could, you know, could even think about that. Absolutely not. Then you have laptop and... I don't think you can... If you approve the new position, they're going to need equipment. And then so the laptop here, mounts are for the new vehicles, so. It's showing six lease vehicles. It says seven. 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 It's supposed to be seven. It's not seven. It doesn't ask for six, it says it's going to be I think Dennis took one off, saying I don't want to. Do you remember that conversation we had when he came in? It was back before that. I think we rejected yeah. Dennis. Yeah. But uh, I think we need to true it up. I've had the conversation with him, too. The aftermarket of the 2014 Tahoe has, uh, has uh, the county has spent money outfitting that recently. That not, has nothing to do with this vehicle. And that's why Dennis took it off. Got it. Because it's 10 years old. Okay. Yeah, but it's only got 80,000 miles on it. It's not the aftermarket. No, it's not. I, I'll just put it out there. No, oh, I hear you. From, in talking with Sheriff Hickman, mm -hmm. it's my understanding that he can make do with five. Okay. So that gets two of them out. That's, I, I don't know what the annual release is. Well, it shows on that schedule. We would take, um, they're one of the higher ticket items. The lease payments are 15600 So we take two of them out, it would be $30,000. If, it, if it's six months, mm -hmm. they weren't coming until January, that would be 15000 Well, see, that creates a problem because he needs them because he's in conversations with Dennis. The Dodge Chargers are, are really mm -hmm. dire now, mm -hmm. big time. So I suggested to him to give the blessing, if the commissioners all agree, to go ahead and place the order now so hopefully we'll get them by the fall. What I would have him do is bring in the um, uh, lease right. documents or the, the estimates and at a commissioner's meeting get approval because we've done that before mm -hmm. when with the because previous, they definitely won't be with the previous the sheriff. The previous sheriff used to come in early all the time. Yep. <laughs> I tried not to. <laughs> <laughs> we're just budgeting an average of six months for the entire fleet. Right. We take them when we right. can get them. Yeah. Right. Um, Yeah, some of these other ones, um, but it all averages it out. Well, if you're going to cut it back to five, then figure on bringing it in before the commissioners will mm -hmm. approve it and they can order. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, honestly, I think in one of the conversations with the sheriff, he said that he's going to come, that he's going to sit on a lot, that if he really wanted it, he could have had it today. So it's not, mm -hmm. I don't know. But if you have 10, you certainly start it early. Yep. I, so say, I say cut it to five, bring him in. And I allow him to go ahead and place the order. Mm -hmm. If everybody's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to follow your. <laughs> okay. Anything else from the sheriff's office? Um. Can we cut retirements any? <laughs> no. 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 Okay. <laughs> Well, we, you know, he also asked for an additional position. Yes. That's a different day. We'll talk about that a different day. But, I mean, but I mean, I don't know what that does to his vehicle situation. Well, I'm we'll sure. talk about that yeah. later, too. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah, if, if he approves the position, then we'll, we'll quantify the, mm -hmm. the cost. Okay. Of okay. Mm. So page. Do all the SROs have a vehicle? If they do, I think they just use an older vehicle, right? That's what we try to do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So maybe that's maybe the plan is to take an older vehicle and repurpose it. But it's not the only thing. Yeah. I, I, Dennis can, Sheriff Hickman can tell us about that. Okay. Uh, and on page 44, mm -hmm. the components. Do we need to talk about the commercial vehicle oh. laptops? What on the yeah, sheriff's okay. office? Yeah, they're no, necessary. They, they got to have them in there. That first out from this year it was originally in twenty three, and I don't think they have time to. No. They couldn't get them. To get them out of trade, that first goes out in twenty three. It was originally mm -hmm. in twenty three, so it couldn't get out the first year this year.
stuff that got to work. So I would. I, that's a pretty reasonable request from the detention center. So those that one's not doors. That one is software. And that is to manage all the information that they manage for the inmates. The current jail management system, whatever it's called, is on its last legs and it's not going to be supported. So if and and there's no cloud backup, I believe. So they need something that has backup. Right now, if that goes down, we lose data, significant data. And then when this decision is made, what will it? I'm just wondering if there's been any conversation with Penny about grant opportunities for something like this. I don't know. For jail management, I would think there will be some federal money or state money out there somewhere. And part of this is for the acquisition, and part of it is for the maintenance, maintenance and support, which 14, is 14000 yeah. yeah. is in operating. So acquisition, was it all in one fell swoop, just in one year? Do you remember? Okay. And then there's $14,000 a year for maintenance. In, in operating. operating. Yeah. Okay. The Homeland Security money mm -hmm. becomes through a grant. What's the total on that each year? I think it varies. It's in the 200 to 300 thousand dollar range usually. I think they can provide 200 to 230 to 50. Does the detention center get some of that? Uh, I don't think they don't traditionally know. have. But isn't some of that for sal specifically your mark for salaries? Because I'm thinking that the equipment piece of it's usually like 30 or 40 thousand. The equipment piece is small. It's the salary piece is the largest but, part of it. The yeah. sheriff's office used to get about 20 some thousand. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think the detention center would be participating in that. I think that the requirement, I'm not sure what the requirements are, but we can find out. Mm -hmm. There might be something to ask Penny about. Yep. Or we will reach out to her about To help that. pay for the jail systems to see if, see if it qualifies. At least a portion of it, maybe. Yeah. I know it's very specific what it can pay for, so I don't know if this will qualify or not, and or if there's another grant that potentially could. Good. Emergency medical services is on page 47. Where did you see police vehicle? I didn't, didn't see that. Uh, no, um, detention center, page 44. So they have a new. you all that okay, information all that stats, and, then you can just and that will include that will help with the justification of them right. whether it passes or not I want to be fair but I mean it, when I see vehicles that sit for a long time mm -hmm. if you see a vehicle that sits for a long time then you think that, it's got that's that to me is a problem yep. and like I said six departments here in this building share one vehicle. So if there's a, a vehicle that's just sitting and they and there's a justification for why we need that vehicle, it's possible that it could be shared with another department to fulfill both needs. That and the fact that we have a declining, which is a good thing, I guess, hmm. detention center population. Yep, absolutely. Uh, is it really necessary? Mm -hmm. Is it something we can live without that we should?
this is isn't the, the sixteen thousand is right just the regular ongoing the yeah. four hundred thousand is the battery is our backup system right right mm -hmm. that's the one that we can and i think that we we oh you're right it's 2025 yeah. sorry i was misreading that i think we've pushed that a couple times as it is haven't we yes That's next year. So that four hundred thousand, just I, I know it's FY twenty five, but what does that do again? I think it. I think it is an upgrade slash uh, new system for the backup system. Out of public works. Correct. Um, we don't even have anybody to run the concession stand, correct? Right, net, right, correct. Sometimes we have other people come in, other but, vendors, right, right. Um, and right now we're kind of hoping we can get a food truck in, um, but we don't know if they're going to need storage for frozen things. Um, I, I say it's a good for question. now, we just, I mean, my opinion is for now, we don't have anybody to run it. We don't have a concession. We don't have a food truck. I don't see why we need a freezer to purchase right at this moment. And if our current freezer goes up, we could certainly come in with a contingency request. Is the current freezer that has gone up, up it's 10 years old, it's up closer to the end of last month. It's evaluated and came up this year. Okay. Uh, again, Parks and Rec is usually a department that comes in a little better than budget, so they may be able to find that $6,000 to buy out of your first money. Good That's what I would ask them to try to do. If if they really think it's necessary. And yeah, most of, definitely. Yeah. Most of the rest of this kind of amounts, well, with the exception of the rest of the amount, kind of around the 20 mm -hmm. um, And you had a question the last budget work session about Bayside Pool, and they did discuss it at the Mayor and Council meeting, and they were not thrilled with the fact that it was being discussed. <laughs> yeah, they they uh, actually spoke with Mayor Mayor Jacobs mm -hmm. and they got the wrong the wrong message. We didn't decide to eliminate No, it absolutely not. Or to close it. Right. It was talked about. Right. Only because there's not a lot of usage there. Yep. And in the yep. in the tight funding that we're in, I felt it was necessary to at least bring it up. Mm -hmm. But uh, after talking about it, I think we all decided that we want to leave it in place and, and open and that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, and we, and they're not even asking for any upgrades with it. All it needs is a, a, a lifeguard. lifeguard. And, and as shallow as it is, I don't think they need two down there. They have to. Unless that's by law. They yeah, have because to. they have to, re they, they're required, yeah. breaks are required. and so Because this is really, it's a re more of a wading pool. I mean, I think Jill said it was five feet deep. I don't think it is. I think it's, huh? Three to five, I think. Is it three to five? But I know the majority of it's, that's why some people like taking their little kids there. Cause they, you know. I would like to see Jill look at trying to maintain Bayside and Millington's pool using the lifeguard that has that certification for water quality. Absolutely. Yeah. If we could order the, you know, you, uh, uh, Obviously, it would have to be researched. <clears throat> Can we get the uh, chemicals on state contract? And if so, or is, is, is it going to be cheaper? If that's all that it involves. Uh, and that's mostly just chemicals? Yeah, okay. chemicals and maybe vacuum and other pools. Is there anything wrong, anything wrong with the lifeguard doing that? I think, so I think small. they do. I think they do already. Oh, do they? Okay. Vacuum. I think they all vacuum. Yeah, I think it's the, you have to have a certification. For the chemicals, it's a certification. Yeah. And she said that most of her life, or a lot of her life was high. Yeah. And that was something that I didn't get fully out. But I, had, when I brought up possibly, and I don't know what the logistics of this would be, but maybe offer that as an elective for a semester if we're in high school, so that maybe a dozen kids would want to get certified. Mm -hmm. 
in this for being able, maybe not just in Kent County, but maybe they go to the beach for the summer or something like that. Um, that's for, or, or maybe even in the evenings at the at the um, mm -hmm. uh, community center. I know that we've offered it in the past at the community center. Red Cross comes <coughs> in. I don't know if we're currently doing. Do you happen to know that either? Yeah. I tell you, it's why we get even a little tougher for those lifeguards because I've seen an advertisement, I think it was on Facebook, where that great wolf lodge that's opening up up Elkton, that was the one thing they were advertising for, needed lifeguards from Spaniards. When are they opening? Huh? When are they opening? Evidently, it's soon. I think, yeah, I think it's soon. I've heard people talk about potentially doing a little mini vacation up there this summer. So it's supposed to be a big, a big deal. I mean, mm -hmm. just, just something I think we should look at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Jill, the, 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 this this sliding board. Mm -hmm. um, I've never been. I've been at the pool, but I've never been in the pool. Um, she said that this one's getting a little dangerous, the, the existing sliding board. I think she feels a little uncomfortable with the fact that, yeah, it shoots the people out at the bottom and they don't realize it's so deep. And I think it's just but it wasn't the board that was unsafe. It was the fact that when they went down, it, it was over their heads where they dropped off. But yep. Well, I mean, I would say she's probably right. I just don't know the way we, that we have the money for right. it. Right. We need to move it to next year. Um, just bump it. Well, I would use it on the board there, so you hear the pros and cons. Yeah, last time I said we've only had one meeting and we were talking about more baseball and softball at the time, really because it was winter time, so we were geared towards that. Um, but uh, I think we have a meeting coming up. Then. I think usually in May they have one. Um, yeah, I think. Maybe we yeah. put it off. I was going to say, maybe we put it off and I'll bring it up at that point. One meeting. more year because yes. we do have the large yeah. uh, roof plaster or the shower. Well, we'll that's exactly that. we, we got the roof plaster. We'll have that next year. Right. Correct. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Just tell them it's going to be postponed another yeah. year. As far as the wrestling mat goes, I think that with the way the program has grown, I think, yeah. I think that that's I a no-brainer. And we even, yeah. I, I tell you, we even approved that the last time, but they wanted to wait till now because they want to put their emblem or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they wanted a special order. That's a spectacular. Those young boys, those young men are doing a heck yeah. of a job, and those, and those kids are too. Jacob's Kerwin daughter was uh, second in the nationals in Salisbury this weekend, last weekend. Um, she beat. She lost to a two-time national champion. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Who did? Jacob Kerwin's daughter. Really? Yeah. He was into that. He oh, was yeah. into that job. Well, he, they're coaching. Joey and Jacob are, yeah. are well, yeah. Joey will be coaching next year. Probably. I got a grandson who's uh, part but, of that, uh, yeah. Uh, but his daughter got second, uh, I think it was in Salisbury, I think. How about that? He was in them cage fights, I mean, them. Yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's on a rotation. Just regular wear and tear. Mm -hmm. As long as they still have the match. It's fine. They still have another year. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's her second to bottom priority, but. Mm -hmm. What's that? The school furniture right above the uh, lodge. I think they do is when something, one of the lounge chairs gets to the point where it can't be used, they take it away. And then during this refresh, basically, it you know, gives another seat to people. Well, not knowing how bad it is. Yeah, her comment is just the 
require due to regular wear and tear from public use and to maintain adequate amounts of, of pool deck furniture or table use. Mm -hmm. A replacement um, replenishment schedule of every other year, every other year has been established. So we, so in we the past, we replaced that much furniture. I think so if you, yeah, if you look at the five years, it's twenty five hundred dollars every other year. So they didn't get any last year. So they didn't actually pay it this year. We can ask Jill if they have money somewhere else in their budget this year that they could purchase that if you'd like. Mm -hmm. They're replacing pool furniture every other year. It's not all. It's not. Uh, it's not full replacement. It's just a. Yeah, three different locations. So Somebody's looking at a different brand of furniture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, they don't take everything out. It's just the stuff that has been beyond repair. <laughs> Just forks for a forklift. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's after. a good idea. Yeah. yeah. We don't have to have the mower conversation this year. This KRM en entrance contribution, we can cut, do away with that completely. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Yeah. yeah, it's on sixty-one. I don't know how we can touch that. I mean, you could take it if you couldn't I do mean, away with it right. if you wanted to. Right. Take the landscaping brick pavers out of there and leave the other two. And, right. I'm good with that. Yes, sir. This was a mandate, correct? Well, the office is a mandate. These are her requests. I'm going to guess the poll books are a mandate. Yeah. I'm all under Maryland voters' desktop computers. Can Scott repurpose? I mean, he has tons of those desktop desktop computers. Computers from when we replace everybody's tablets. I'm wondering if he could reconfigure. Be good to look. That'd be worth looking into, I think. I mean, our IT office has been putting up, pushing out the message with partner agencies. We have tons of those desktops. When we gave everybody laptops so they could go home and work during the pandemic. Why would they need a laser jet primer? I mean, are we printing to our copy machines for the most part now in the county? That's one of the good questions, and I, I don't know the answer. I don't know if they have one. I mean, I assume they do, but I can't attest to that. I would assume they have, would have a set of programs. I don't think we buy laser jets anymore. We don't. I would like to know just what we're mandated to do. There was legislation that was passed that mandates that we do something. Do you remember what it was, Shelly? Every election office. Every year there's a new mandate pushed I, down. I think it's the poll books. Mm -hmm. They change software, they change mm -hmm. hardware. We'll, we'll get an answer to that question. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the, with the poll books, it's a 50-50 split with the, the state. Would you 
say 88? Wait a minute. Isn't there another one in there? I think there's one in between. Oh, um, there's Ag Prez, which I'm not sure that there's much to look at there. So the key, the key thing here with POS is we pay 10%, the state pays 90. What page are you on? 73. 73. So $3,100. Am I looking at Six, that? Right? 69000 Almost full is to full with them when it, when ninety percent of it is coming from the state. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's probably enough conversation about the middle school project and that presentation in the twenty four. Just our chair. Right. Well, I think the key question would be is do we want to start in 24? <coughs> and this project would be financed, so there's really no impact to the operating budget because we, we bring in the money and it goes back to the project here itself. So when you say finance, how's that going to work? to the public safety. Correct. Right. And you're going to see on an upcoming agenda where Mike and Pat have been working very hard to get the documents in order to start the ball rolling with um, a bond rating, a financial advisor and bond counsel. So we're really seriously looking at going to New York and getting the bond rating so that we can issue bonds to pay for these big projects. We, we can't borrow $32 million yeah. locally from small banks. Um, you know, we, this is, the public safety building will be the largest project that we've ever done, and then this one is right behind it. So I think the biggest question we have to look at is, you know, can we afford to be paying debt service on both of them? That's where I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, it scares me to death that I don't sleep at night thinking about both of these projects at the same time. I just don't know how the county can provide doing both of them at the same time. I just don't. And, I, and they're both important. They're both important. Do you remember the debt service numbers by any chance, Pat? I, I think. I know you've run those numbers in the past. Yeah, I know.
process and it's carrying over from last year. So. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only highest. I mean, obviously, we got to keep it in shape. Sure. But just stop and think about what's going on in the future now. If the if the if the estimates of that curve one where we have to come up <coughs> with a million six in new money every year for about seven years in a row, and we only take in about a million new dollars, how many new dollars we got? I mean, an av the last ten years, I think the average was we come up with a million one hundred thousand in new money every year. Going into the budget. It's, oh, you mean? Yeah, it's usually somewhere Average. between a, a million and three million. It's usually, I, yeah, it's usually between okay, one. Okay, so if they're asking for one point six million, so you got to raise. You're gonna have. Yeah. That's that's a tax increase, and that's ignoring everything we've talked about last week and what. I mean, that's ignoring the rest of the county. I just unless something happens, I just don't know what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, and then I mean honestly. And just to keep in mind, keep in the back of your head, that by raising taxes by one penny, very, very <laughs> rough estimates, you're going to gain 300000 So you're talking about a $6 million debt service I'm not, payment. I'm personally not ready to sign off on a school. Just I'm going to go through one or one year of this curl until they figure out what it's all about before I put us in that, for that school, I think. Uh, That's me. stand a lot better chance of getting me to vote for it if you push it out a year. But that's, I'm, I'm the only one and I'm, I just, the, there's so many unknowns with this curve one that if I, I, I'm like Albert, I, you, you can, you get, you stay up nights thinking about it, you can lose your sleep over that. <laughs> I think Ronnie makes a good point, and I, I agree with what he's saying at this point, only because of the financial situation. It, it's so unknown. And, you know, this is something that I think that they should have engaged with us a long time ago about, and maybe they did. It's, but it's been on the radar for a few years, and we've been talking about it. With no commitment. And, you know, I'd love nothing more than to see a new middle school Okay, I got a bunch but, of little grandkids that's going to go through that thing. I'd love to see a brand new facility, but I'm just scared of what the future holds. And but the blueprints. The wealth over. formula. I, I, was gonna, I, I agree with, 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 with both Ronnie and the sheriff. I think that uh, there's no doubt we'd love to have a new middle school. Um, and I think that, like you, I mean, I know that there's been talk of it, but I don't think that there's been talk of it in conjunction with Kerwin. I think there's been talk of, oh, we know Kerwin's coming and it's here. Now we want a new middle school. And, and, but for us, we've got to balance the two together. Um, and I just, in all honesty, I don't, I don't see where the money is. There, but we don't have the money. Well, you'll hear, you're, you're going to hear from the fire companies tonight. And I mean, everybody's want, but if you if if the predict projections of uh, Kerwin turn out to be anywhere as close, uh, people lucky. can't people We'd can't stand us raising pro. taxes five cents a year for seven years in a row. Well, that's I mean, what how does how does that bode for economic development? We're second highest on the score. Or already or tourism or or bringing new people here or keeping the retention of the of the younger people that we all, everybody, there's not a person you talk to that doesn't want that. Yeah, that's uh, our factory and it's somewhere between, it's around 15 cents higher than Kerwin. And listen, people can raise hell all they want, but we've done a pretty good job in my 25 years. I think we've raised taxes one time and that's when 
O'Malley took the five, all of our gas money away from us. And we've learned to live within our means, and we got a pretty damn nice place to live. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, and to, to jump off the deep end and with, with the future of what it's hope, what it looks like in the future, I just, I can't bring myself to be in. Well, I think, with I that. think there are going to be some hard decisions that are going to be made in the upcoming years, and some of those hard decisions are going to deal with regionalization. And may, maybe that means the schools, maybe it means other services, but I don't see how we're going to get away from that. That's what I would like. I mean, technology moving is forward. tiny. I'm hoping to. that after we get through this one year of, of curling, let us see what it holds let's first. See, let, let's see what, I think what the bigger be counties are going to be. Made. I think there's going to be changes made. I think so, too. And I, don't I certainly would encourage them to, although we don't have a lot of say in that. And, and I don't want to add fuel to the fire when it comes to this wealth formula, but this wealth formula is affecting this page on our budget sheet again. I mean, I, it, I'm, Every time you turn around, it, it does. It, it's, it's a drum that I beat often because we are responsible for 50% of the construction costs because we're so wealthy. A less wealthy county is paying a fraction of what we are paying on the total bill. So yeah. yet again, the wealth formula is biting us. Yeah. And that per pupil cost where we pay the lion's share of it, other counties pay pennies towards it compared to us. Yep. It's just, it's just, uh, it ain't curve when it upsets me so bad. It's the wealth formula because everything revolves around that. Mm -hmm. This is just that one hundred fifty thousand that we went to testify about, and we, we got it. We end up right? getting that. We end up getting twenty five because <laughs> of the wealth formula, and we have Christ. I don't keep me from having to go over to that place and to testify in Annapolis. I'd almost paid that myself <laughs> and stayed home if I. Not quite, but I said almost. <laughs> well, I, I I agree. I think that there's going to hopefully there there will be some some new reasoning coming from Annapolis next year, but I also think that we need to, and I say we. I don't know whether that's that's us as the, the, the county or, or the, the the school board, the commissioners of the school board, really need to to start thinking about the regionalization of partnering with. Um, for, for lots of different, a variety of services. Agreed. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Or we, we just need to move it out, move it on the schedule. I am. I am. I'd leave it on the schedule and just, just move it a year. Push it out a year. Yeah. Let us have a year of Kerwin first. And if they happen to be listening, they need to know that all three of us sitting here are committed to Absolutely. Yep. something at some point. Hopefully everyone understands that this is probably not the year to do that. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, you know, we know we're not going to get away for with forever without a new school. That we know that. I think the one they want to replace is seventy years old. We've seen its better days, probably. Yeah. you enter through the back entrance no. with no steps no. and the side and the side yes. yes okay so they also want a front entrance mm -hmm. that where there are no stairs getting up into the library well I think if we have two other alternative uh, uh, routes of, of entry or points of entry I, I think that that's good enough. this year that we're gonna have to my vote is to I hear you push, push that back Wastewater, page 88. This is always a fun one. So there's lots of requests here. Um, Mike Hansen prioritized. So I don't know if you want to start from the bottom or start at the top. One thing for sure, history is going to show us they're not going to get all of them done next year. <laughs> Good point. We tend to say that. Good I point. bet you you can take take the, the most um, the first half and take the other, the other half off. That's my opinion. I don't know. Mike might say different, but 
these things have been on the agenda for a record while. And uh, what is the total amount? Eight hundred ninety-six thousand. Basically nine hundred thousand. That's what I would do. I'm telling when he gets those done, the top half done, come see it. out on the limb here and say that if it's out of service then we are simply um, delivering more water to the uh, landfill yeah yeah so it's not that it's putting the whole operation out of service it's just We give him a half a million dollars and tell him to spend it on what, whatever he needs, what he, what's most important. We're losing our audience. I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. I'm, I'm good with that, at least. Well, I think he should still provide a priority for us so I know what he's... They're in priority, they're in priority order. order. He has priority time. Eight hundred and some. Eight ninety, almost nine hundred thousand dollars. If you take the bottom two, you're going to take that four hundred thousand. That leaves. I half like a your idea. <laughs> okay. I like your idea. Give him a half a million dollars, and if he needs to reprioritize, he can. Yeah. yeah. He can use because that one pipe that he was talking about, for, it's only like twenty-two thousand dollars, but it was leaking or something. Tell you what. My problem would be climbing that tower. We'll give you, we'll give you Even if the oh, I'd climb that. Two hundred dollars. <laughs> from the Rural Maryland Economic Development Fund from Hogan um, to pay for the KRM entrance and the two projects listed here, Wharton Water and Sewer Service Extensions and the majority of the Millington Wastewater Treatment Plant design, but there still is a piece of it that is left for county funding for, for each of those. I think we have to do that. But I think we got to do that, right, to get and we were given money for the majority of the project, so that this is just the little piece that the county's on the hook for. I mean, I think we have to do it. Yeah. Well, and then you have Bayside Land name. I'm thinking. Um, so the really the pool furniture is in here, um, and the other one is the the pool and bulkhead replacement where the state is paying for more than half of that project. And I think we got that we got that grant extended to mm -hmm. the end of 2023. So if we don't do this project this year, we're I think we're at the end of our. To me, that's one of the prettiest 
harbors. We have questions about that. And I think we need to maintain it. I, it, it, I, yeah. Especially if we're getting And we, we certainly don't want to lose half when we're right. past the front. Right. Yeah. We're getting 40 that's, to 50 percent of it. That's one more. area where Kent County gets its fair share. We're talking about economic tourism. Mm -hmm. Correct. We paid a million and a half dollars for that place, and the state gave us a million and a quarter. We put up about 300, 200, and then we sold a travel lift down there, 25,000. And that pool and everything was there. Then the state come in and put the boat ramp in. They paid for 90% of that. And that's a nice boat ramp. That's that's one. One. Yeah. Well. Thank you. So that, that's your first. Uh, yeah. Or allocations. Really? I'd like to have Shelley to find out from Wayne. You know, they're asking for four paramedics. And are these going to be part timers or are these going to be full time? No, well, these are full time. Right now, if we are fully staffed, if we are fully staffed, we can man all three locations 24 7. If we drop under full staffing, we have somebody quit or retire, then we have a couple of part-timers that we start plugging shifts. If they can't fill the shifts, that's when we have um, co stations not covered. So to cover, you know, Wayne was thinking, well, if we hire one new one for every location plus one person that rotates, we will have absolutely zero but like I said as we are right now we can fully staff all three locations with a paramedic and an EMT it's when we fall beneath full staffing that and that's 24 hours a day 24 7, seven a three locations we can and that's so, something I think I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just think that that's something we need to and, and like Ronnie said, I mean, I certainly don't want to show any deal. We, I, we appreciate everything Absolutely. that they do, but, uh, um, you know, we are, the county is now taking that lion's share off of their plate. I mean, that's, that's huge. And yet they're, or, still, or most they're still retaining the lion's share of the billing. So they're not even going out on the calls, but they are right. retaining the money for their ambulance going. Uh, I think when Apple left. When a are, are we still on? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when, when she retired. Yes. I'm not sure that the county is continuing to bill at the county level. We don't bill. The stations bill. Yeah. Is there a reason why the county doesn't? Because they did it one time. I we were supposed to get 25% of the call if one of our people went on the ambulance. Right. And, and, we, and then they took over the billing, see? We they wanted even to see it no more. This was years ago. Huh? Years ago, they took over the billing. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, be, I before I even seen, started with the county. I don't think we've seen any, the numbers. We, Pat can't tell you what's generated by that billing service. No, they, they bill themselves. They bill themselves. They, and they, they have either, companies they do have, it for They them. hire a company and the company bills. So we do not have visibility in that whatsoever. I've heard that it was a, it, it helped them out a lot. Some money being collected. Absolutely. But I don't know because that. the reality of it is, it more than pays for their ambul ambulance side of the house. Most of the fire companies have an ambulance side and a fire company side, a, a fire, uh, yeah. fire fighting side. Um, and the ambulance is what helps support the fire company side. They get more in billings than they actually put out on the ambulance side, and that helps 
them basically subsidize the firefighting side of their operation. And their donations, there will be way more people donate to an ambulance fund Absolutely. than a firefighting fund because almost everybody has to ride in one sometime Some or point. another. Yeah. Much fewer people have to depend on the fire truck. But I mean, they, when you do, you're going to afford it. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, in good times, it would be nice to have four paramedics. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to be here. Long, I'd like to be here long enough to say we did it. Got, you know, it's going to be pretty good to say we we got a paramedic and EMT in three places in Kent County, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We and we started with a half of a deputy or a half of a paramedic. And right now, fully staffed. We got it. We We're got there. It right now. We but, got it. But nobody if somebody gets sick. leaves or gets sick, then we got a problem. And, and, but I and also just, say, if if we're having trouble like hiring a new paramedic, where are we going to get four new ones? If if we're having trouble replacing the ones that we the positions we currently have. And I'm I'm wondering what are they going to do, other than ride two in a vehicle. Agreed. Which is great to have two. Oh, absolutely. Paramedics on scene, but right. right. Um, especially in a bad situation. But would two be enough to allow us that flexibility, two full-timers as opposed to four? That may be beneficial. So just something to think about. Mm -hmm. And maybe Wayne can weigh in on that. Some of the bigger ones, the health, the health department is the biggest ask that we have, and the library is also a large one. So, mm -hmm. and the schools are clearly. <laughs> so, um, we're going to start at one o'clock, and we're going to we're going to have those people do their presentations, and then we'll do a workshop for however long you you want. And keep in mind, next week we have the 10 a.m. meeting. So we'll start at 10 a.m., get through whatever is on the agenda for next week, which the agenda is pretty much already set for next week. And then at 1 o'clock, we'll reconvene for the work session. When Mr. Webb comes in, will he have Dr. Spencer with him, do you think? He usually does not. Um, Emily. Yeah, he usually has Emily. Is McCoy. it possible that <clears throat> I've got some information about the school nurse program, mm -hmm. and there's some issues there as far as the level of funding that the and school is willing to allocate. And you're going to have Karen Couch and Bill Webb here next so week. So it yeah. might be uh, we could like we have both people in the room. It might be nice to have Dr. Spencer here too to weigh in with his ability. I mean, the, See, I don't from know. The I didn't even know about if Dr. Spencer was still involved. Or I was going to say. So yeah. yeah, Bill Webb is our health officer, but he is not a doctor. He's a mister. So you have to have a doctor for the medical side of things. And so we've retained Dr. Spencer as the medical doctor for our health department. And he deals with anything where you need an actual MD. Uh, yes, I did confirm that. Yeah. I can reach out to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems to be a very, I mean, from the numbers that I've seen, it's a very minimal task. some other ideas for the trim too if they're willing to do that so what do we we just wait now for the meeting to start i mean we're done with yes, the budget. unless you have anything else you want to discuss today no, I'm fine. So we have about 50 minutes we'll recess for about 50 minutes and reconvene at six okay yep. it was a really good start thank you uh, you accomplished what you asked. Great job. Right? Oh, great. <laughs> 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 <laughs>